Seahawks Today by Chat Sports is presented by Hexclad. You can save 10% off going to hexclad.com slash chat sports. We'll tell you more about Hexclad coming up later on in the show. Your Seattle Seahawks are 2-1 and one to begin the 2023 NFL season after a great win yesterday against the Carolina Panthers. We'll break it all down in a moment, but I want you to spam W in that comment section. Celebrate that Seahawks win. I want to see at least no more than 300 comments on today's show of all those W's celebrating that Seahawks win. Who can do it? Get those W's in there. Let's get after it. We'll get started with today's show. It is overreaction Monday. We have the top storylines from yesterday's performance of what people had to say all over the internet. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll get to it in a moment. But first, injury news for your Seattle Seahawks. Positive injury news. He is back. Jamal Adams will play a week from tonight against the New York Giants on Monday Night Football. Very good news for the Seahawks to get their star safety back this upcoming week. With that, let's go ahead and move on to overreaction Monday. Let's start with Jaron Reed and the overreaction. A lot of people saying, Jaron Reed, the answer the Seahawks were looking for, I don't think that's an overreaction. Yes, Jaron Reed delivered. In yesterday's performance, was something similar to what we talk about usually with guys like Aaron Donald or Chris Jones, something to that magnitude. He played on their level last night. That's how well he played. Of The performance that he put together, that's the type of stuff that we see from Aaron Donald week in and week out. That's what Jaron Reed did in the Seahawks win. The statistics for you for Jaron Reed, eight tackles, one and a half sacks. One tackle for loss, three QB hits. I could argue it was the greatest performance of Jaron Reed's career to this point. And the numbers, according to PFF, back up these statistics that we showed you as well. A 90.4 overall grade, a run defense grade of 81.3, a tackling grade of 72.5, and a pass rush grade of 81.6. Jaron Reed was phenomenal. I mean, even look at that dance uh, that you can see on your screen there. You can tell he was failing himself. A little key and peel love there uh, for Jaron Reed. If you know, you know. So I hope there's more to come with Jaron Reed, that what we saw yesterday was the beginning of something special, that it wasn't just a one-off. But I want to ask you, our pin comment today, do you believe in Jaron Reed? If you do, type B for believe. If you don't, type D for don't. Chime in the comment section. Tell us what you think, if you're all in on Jaron Reed or not. Number two on overreaction Monday. The offensive line can be trusted. Not an overreaction, I think. Uh, I know there's going to be some skeptics out there, but I got to say, I like what I've seen through from the offensive line these past two games without your starting tackles, uh, Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross. What we've seen from this Seahawks team in the last two games is that this offensive line can get the job done without those two guys, which... If you looked at that second half against the L.A. Rams, they have certainly come a long way. And one of the things that I talked about on this channel over the last you know, couple of weeks was that while these guys were out, it's really just about survival. It's just trying to get through these next few weeks until their return. And the results that we've seen from this offensive line over the last couple of weeks in the last two games, they've given up just a total of three sacks. And one of those sacks last week was not even their fault. Geno Smith held the ball too long. So the offensive line is really emerging. They are coming along and doing their part to get through this uh, juncture that the Seahawks are in of not having those guys. Look at the grades from PFF uh, of what the Seahawks did on the O-line yesterday. Damian Lewis, the highest grade offensive lineman with a 72.1 overall grade, pass block grade of 72 Ben Brown with a 77.7 pass block grade. Uh, I mean, Anthony Bradford, his numbers weren't fantastic. Uh, Jake Curhan, his numbers not great, but good enough to get the job done. And that's all you're asking for is just be good enough, and they're delivering. We've seen Geno put up some big numbers. The run game came alive, and that all starts because of the offensive line doing its part to create those openings for those skill players to succeed. All right, guys, it's time to talk about your kitchen. No, I'm not talking about your roommate's dishes in the sink. 
Today's sponsor, Hexclad, has revolutionized the cookware industry with a hybrid pan that gives you all the convenience and cleanup of nonstick, the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and a lifetime warranty just in case you find a way to destroy it. Go to hexclad.com slash chatsports for 10% off. Hexclad truly checks every single box when it comes to picking your cookware. They are metal utensil safe, dishwasher safe, and oven safe up to 500 degrees. Don't just take my word for it. Celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay uses them at home too. The sear I get with these pans is incredible with absolute no stick. The temperature control is utter perfection, and the cleanup is effortless. I love using Hexclad at home. And here is Hexclad, folks, in all its glory. You can see this thing is a beauty, and it works great for you as well. It's not just the look. It is also the results that you get with Hexclad. They are the sexiest pans on the market. Oh, score points at home. It's time to stop ordering delivery and start cooking like a big boy with Hexclad. Real cuisine isn't made in the microwave. It's cooked in a Hexclad. For a limited time, get 10% uh, with your with our special link, hexclad.com slash chatsports. That's 10% off at H-E-X-C-L-A-D dot com slash chatsports to get your Hexclad product today. Number three on Overreaction Monday. Best backfield in the NFL. I saw a lot of people talking about that. That I would call an overreaction right now. But that's something that could change down the road. At this very moment, not there, but they're on the right track. I thought what we saw from the Seahawks on Sunday was a huge step in the right direction. A little too early in their young careers to call them the best backfield in the National Football League. But one day, they very well could be. The numbers from the Seahawks, look at this. Uh, from Sunday. Kenneth Walker leading the way with his best game of the year so far. 97 carries, 5.4 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Zach Charbonnet was really silent as well. Nine carries, 46 yards as a team. 146 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, 4.4 yards per carry. That will work every single time. This run game is on the right track. And we know what Pete Carroll wants to do. He wants to establish the run to open up the passing game and what we saw from the Seahawks team was the ability to do just that. More on Overreaction Monday in a moment. But first, folks, we are making significant progress on building this channel for the 12s. As we cover the Seahawks each and every day, we had a fantastic watch party yesterday. Got another one coming up for Monday Night Football against the Giants. Subscribe now for free. Sub for dubs. Celebrate that Seahawks win and join the family here on Seahawks today for daily news and rumors. Live shows on Wednesdays, watch parties and more, live here each and every day here on Seahawks Today. Subscribe now. Help us get to 41.5 thousand subscribers, just over 200 away from getting there. Subscribe now. You'll be glad you did. Panic mode in the secondary. That was another discussion over the interwebs in the last 24 hours, and I think it's a little bit too early to go full-on panic mode uh, at this point when it comes to the secondary because you still have a lot of talent that's still trying to figure themselves out. Now, the statistics say that the Seahawks defense is averaging uh, 328 passing yards uh, allowed per game. That's 31st in the NFL. That's not great of all the passing yards that they're giving up at this point in time. Now, you look at the defensive statistics, and the numbers aren't too great either. Uh, you know, when you look at uh, opponent passing play percentage is 25th of the league, completion percentage is 18th, yards per game is 28th, passing uh, attempts per game is uh, 43.7. There's a lot of confidence that these opponents are having in their passing game to take on this Seahawks defense. But I'm telling you, folks, better Times are ahead, and I'll explain why here in just a second. But first, I want to hear from you. What's your concern level with the Seahawks secondary right now? Scale it 1 through 10. Not time to panic as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you why, and my number would be pretty low. It's still a 3 or a 4 at this point. Give me your concern level number in the comments section. Here's the thing. There's a lot of injuries to this group over the last few weeks. I mean, just yesterday alone, the Seahawks, uh, you know, had the injury to Trey Brown, the concussion. Devin Witherspoon made his debut last week. 
Uh, Mike Jackson came in and played fairly well after Trey Brown had uh, his injury. You're still winning football games. You've won the last two. Be patient. Let this group come together. They will figure it out. It's still a relatively young group. Not to mention Jamal Adams coming back this week is going to help the cause as well. Last and overreaction Monday. This is where I think it's okay to panic. And that is the defensive coordinator situation with Clint Hurt. Clint Hurt is doing a terrible job with the play calling on this defense. And if it were up to me, he'd be fired immediately. Uh, The biggest problem with the Seahawks defense is not uh, the individuals. Uh, I know we talked about the secondary and the issues that are going on there. It's not because of the personnel that the defense is struggling. It's because of the play calling and the decisions that are being made by Clint Hurt, not putting this team in a position to succeed. All the lapses in coverage, uh, you know, putting guys in the wrong place, that falls on the play caller and who's designing those schemes that comes down to Clint Hurt. He is the one to blame right now. Look at these defensive statistics, folks. I hope there's better days ahead, but I'm worried there's not if Clint Hurt continues to call these uh, defensive signals. I'd much rather have Pete or somebody else do it because right now you're allowing close to 30 points a game near the bottom of the league in yards per game, 25th in points per play, 28th in opponent yards per play, and dead last in red zone scoring. Every time somebody's gotten in the red zone this season, it's been a touchdown. That's bad. That can't last. Seahawks got to improve defensively. They have the talent to do it, but they don't have the coordinator to do it. Get out of here, Clint Hurt. Get out of here. You're a loser. I'm sick of you. Should the Seahawks fire Clint Hurt? Why for yes, in for no? What do you guys think? Chime in, tell me in the comments section. I want to hear from you one way or the other. Give me your honest take, your honest opinion on this, and I'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today. 